everybody, I think I'm on. Huh? So, yeah, it's working. So, hello, everybody. Welcome at uh, Scuba Digital. And um, I am Frank uh, from the Smiling Seahorse. And uh, I want to talk to you about the Mergui Archipelago in Myanmar. This is where we, uh, where we dive. We are located in Thailand, but we dive on the other side of the border into Myanmar waters. So the best thing in order for you to discover the best, uh, the archipelago would be a video right now. And uh, then I will talk to you a bit more in depth of what we can see and where in the archipelago and most important, why you need to come dive with us. All right, so get ready for the video. Piece of advice, you probably want to go full screen so you appreciate better. Off the coast of Myanmar lies the local waters of the Merkou Archipelago. With over 800 islands, this area is a plan for exploration of the Merkou surface. And the smiling seahorse is the beach shows that it comes to bring you to this untouched paradise. With 200 meter towering cliffs, pristine white sand beaches, ancient volcanic lagoons, the world characters, and the world class diet, darker than the oaks that go over the cliffs. Between dives, we'll take you cruising between some few islands on the set of the waters of the Andaman Sea. As one of the select few companies that dive in the world, we'll take you exclusive destinations to your dark color, and it's not uncommon to go an entire week without seeing a single one of the dive in the the first one we like, they have very terrain. Each dive holds the opportunity to explore new underwater worlds. The Merkuri Archipelago is home to healthy reefs and life that ranges from colorful and rare and rare. All the way to large villages, like bell sharks and manta rays. You'll find hollow bush rock, schools of barracuda, cephalopods, sea turtles, hunting fish, and everything in between. And if the ocean seems a bit too open for you, we map massive caves and swim caves that provide ample opportunity to discover life, adventure, and worlds that you've never seen before. When you're not done, you'll find a confident and convenient support of a world class guy. The only thing smart is the horse is a 25 meter, four story vessel, meticulously designed by and four diners. We have only four up to 16 guests in air conditioned rooms, with options for private bathrooms or master suites with panoramic windows. Unknown on our roof deck, indulge in a blessed blessing and an ancient food will find on our living room. Or maybe swing with the wind of the ocean in one of our big cabins. Our dive deck is designed to make your home bathing experience efficient, practical, and worry free. We have individual cuttings and spaces for all of your gear, a photo room for your cameras, lights, and charging equipment, and the ability to fill the drugs on your own. With our friendly and professional staff, it's your job to eat, sleep, dive, and relax. It's our job to help facilitate a true incredible time. There's no other place in the world. And what better way to experience it than with the spotted seahorse? Whether you're a seasoned diver, someone looking for a new certification, a photographer, or someone seeking an adventurous luxury vacation on one of the premier diving boats in the world, a trip with the spotted seahorse will be an experience you won't get ever forget. Yeah, <clears throat> well, um, that was for the for the video. So let me up on, on the wrong screen. All right, so the the video is pretty thorough. You can see <clears throat> a lot of 
uh, diversity in landscape, caves, open areas, and all. And um, I'm going to go in depth with the um, with the the, the, the detail uh, with some more pictures. But before I go forward, I just want to explain where we are uh, in the um, on the planet. So uh, I'm going to share a little bit more things. Okay, so, okay, so there we are, you should see it coming in a minute. All right, so I assume that most of you, or all of you know where is Thailand. Uh, so this is Thailand between Cambodia to the east and Myanmar to the east, uh, to the west. And we are along that very tip, uh, south tip border of Myanmar. So you can see here that's the extreme uh, south of Myanmar. And that's where we are located, a place called Ranong. We are on the Thailand side and we dive the archipelago, which is uh, this area here. And uh, that's it, zoomed in, that, that, that looks like this. So this is still Renault, and we go diving in this archipelago. It doesn't look like much on the picture, but there is about 800 islands, and most of them have never been dived, never, never been explored. There are some uh, national parks, but unfortunately not marine national park only yet. Um, so the place has something very special is the diversity. Diversity starts with the, um, the, the topography, the landscapes above and underwater. And that's because it's all created by, uh, all formatted, sorry, by the, um, Different, uh, different type of rocks. So the first thing we can see when we uh, get in the archipelago is some big, uh, yeah, some big limestone rocks, cliffs, and um, you can see it's a very graphic uh, landscape. That's one of the dive sites with our boat on the background. So you can see it's limestone, creates for a lot of cracks and holes. And there is actually a swim through in this particular dive site. So that dive site, I like to call this fish island for the shape of it, but that one is made of granite. So it's massive boulders above and underwater, a bit like Seychelles like uh, type of landscape. And that creates for very different um, uh, atmosphere. So we do set foot on land on some of the islands, some villages with our dinghy here. So that's uh, the traditional village, a uh, village of Mokens, which are the sea gypsies. That's their embarkations. Boat with uh, white sand beaches. It's very untouched area. That was a day of extremely good visibility. You can see all the way to the bottom and that's 30, 25 to 30 meters depth here. All of limestone with cracks and even tunnels that cross the island. That's another, that's the same island from a different, uh, different angle. Granite. So my approach at first was to talk about uh, the diversity that's good for photography, but it's also good for anybody that, that looks uh, for changes. See, it's, it's very graphic, very beautiful. And uh, the difference from limestone and granite creates for very different underwater landscapes. Now, what's very special in the archipelago is the closeness of, every, of all the islands. And also the fact that it's very shallow. We have about 30 meter depth in general. 
So 30 meters with all uh, of depth and all the island close to one another. Given we have tidal currents, six hours going one direction, six hours going the other direction, by passing through or between uh, the islands, that creates some very strong venturi effect. And this is key for this area um, to keep its uh, healthy ecosystem. And the biodiversity we have in this water is for, I think, a lot, uh, is due a lot because of those parameters, those conditions. So that was a granite, that's a granite morning. We also have a lot of sea life that jumps off the water. Here we have a marlin. We sometimes have mantas as well jumping. That's limestone, good sunset. Some whales also are passing by. And, uh, oops, that was not supposed to be here. And uh, that's also dolphins, of course, playing at the front of the boat. Beautiful. So that is above water. Now, when it comes to the underwater, let's go and have a look. Okay. So underwater, we have a lot of corals, a lot of soft coral and um, um, sea fans or gorgonian sea fans. They are pretty much all over the place, covering every reef, and that's really a sign of health. Um, let's keep going. See, same gorgonian sea fan and soft coral. Always a lot of schooling fish, uh, glass fish or, or juvenile, but they are all over the place. So here we have a little bit of uh, hard coral. Or table coral like this with all the soft coral under. It's very, very colorful all the time. So if you're a photographer and you look for diversity, that's the place to come. Honestly, all the pictures you see here, I've been taking them myself in the archipelago and I never get tired of it. It's so changing, so many different species. I keep on discovering new species pretty much every year. Here you can see the two scorpion fish hiding in the soft coral. The uh, feather star. And when we go a bit further west, uh, outside of the archipelago towards India, we, we have some place that we call the, that are called the Burma banks. It's a massive sand dunes coming from very deep, coming up to shallow, like diveable area, like 25, 30 meter, 15 for the shallowest. And that's where we can find those massive barrel sponge. It's not everywhere. And also from the Burma banks, these big bummies and, and Christmas trees, still some sea fans, fire coral, lettuce coral, See, it's very, very um, covered in soft coral and very colorful and always plenty of life. So that was for the coral. Let's see what's uh, live in the coral. So if you are a macro enthusiast, uh, that will be a very um, a good playground for you because there is so many, many, many species uh, hiding in the coral. So here we have some uh, uh, tiger curries. Tiger egg curries, sorry to be specific. Some uh, Durban dancing shrimps, they are absolutely everywhere. Weep coral shrimp, laser fish, frog fish, of course. Some uh, feather star shrimp, ghost pipe fish, another frog fish, harlequin shrimp, crustacean are everywhere. From the small to the big, uh, big crabs. That's a pineapple fish, it's very rare, but we have, uh, we are lucky enough to find some every year. This is just a panel of what we can see here as a macro life. So you have a pygmy squid, catch a uh, glass shrimp, some opera shrimp. That one was on a sea cucumber, but you can find some on the Spanish dancers as well. Seahorses, more shrimps, curry again, 
nice, uh, nice curry. The long nose, oak fish, all of it is there, right? So you have a lot, a lot of diversity, and that was for the um, for the macro. Oh, there's more coming. There we go. Skeleton shrimp, yeah. And um, what I want to show you as well is the larger fish that you can bump into, of course. Let me close that one. There it is. So it's um, a lot of schooling fish or big fish, but we have a big diversity when it comes to wide angle photography. Uh, when it comes to composition and uh, choice of uh, subject, it's endless. The big tube of barracudas are there. Big, big school of trevelies. That's a porcupine ray. Marble ray. Big school of uh, fusiers. It's, it's plenty, plenty of life. And uh, here, uh, that picture was from the Burma banks with some uh, nurse shark. You can sometimes find about 10, 20 nurse shark at the same place. Yeah, like this. Bump into a nurse shark. Total, yeah. And uh, octopus, of course. And for the big guy comes the manta. We have a very special event happening uh, in March. When it comes to manta, it's the biggest oceanic manta gathering for mating. So it's a mating station. It happens only once a year. And if you're lucky enough, you can have up to 50 oceanic mantas zooming around, passing again and again. And it lasts. It lasts for two weeks, three weeks, a month sometime. It's really, really nice. That's very special. That was at Black Rock. So manta from above, from below. The whale shark, of course, we have the big guy, both of them, they feed on the same thing. And the, the good thing about the archipelago is that because it's very unknown, we are alone on pretty much every dive site. So when you, bump in, when you bump into a whale shark, it's all for yourself. When you bump into, uh, when you have a chance to have the mantas coming, there is no idiots running after them. It's only you. So that's, that's just a fantastic feeling to be the only boat, 360 degrees around, and all the fish are for you. So I'm talking about the boat. Let's see, let's see what the boat looks like. So that's where you're going to be spending most of the time. Oops, I think I closed it instead of opening it. Just a mistake. Then it should come back. There it is. Okay. Let's have a look. So that's our boat, a uh, boat that we built uh, two years ago. So it's uh, fairly new. And it's a boat that we designed from scratch. Uh, say we, my wife and myself, we are both divers and we built this boat or designed this boat for divers. So there is really everything we need to have on a dive boat. And um, that's what we did, <laughs> basically. We can see the, um, the doors, all the cabin doors are given to the outside. So if you need some fresh air, you just have... You just have to open your, your window or your door. You're not inside in a damp environment. It's really open. And we have a large sun deck on top. Let's have a look. And at the front, at the bottom front, that's where we have the master cabin. 
another view from the door, view of the sun deck. All right, and uh, here we have the dinghy. So that's how we, we set the dinghy down. There is a crane and a platform, put the dinghy down, and that's how we can take the customers to the, to the beach. That's the sun deck with a hammock and uh, some uh, sun beds. All right. These customers enjoying the area. All right. That's one of the alley. Front of the boat with some happy customers. Another alley. That's the front. All right, that's the living room area with some uh, a stool, a bar stool. And at the back, you can see the lounge area. All right, another view of it. And all the fresh fruits are available on board. People are very chilled out in a very relaxed environment. Happy customers at the breakfast. That's a very famous pineapple fried rice. Some dive site on the background and you can see the lounge area. That's the lounge area and Black Rocks. I was talking about the meeting for the, the mating pot for Manta. That's the place. A little bit of the lounge area. And the dive area, the dive deck. So that must have been taken on a fully booked boat. So you can see there are uh, racks everywhere, tanks everywhere, but still very spacious. Some uh, place for you to keep your personal equipment and the small uh, compartment. On the background, you can see the photo room. So it's very well designed for photographers. You have a, a, a room dedicated for your camera and housing. Here you have the tanks in the middle. Those are the oxygen tanks for nitrox. The photo room. Before and after. So there you go with all the camera and the rinsing tank. Now we are in the cabin. So that is the master cabin. And the ensuite bathroom. So it's large bathroom, one per, per two meters. So it's very wide. That will be the deluxe cabin set up for double bed and we can set it up for bunk beds like this one. So it's only a matter of pulling a drawer or pushing it in. And that's how we convert every cabin from double to single or, or bunk bed. So that one has the bathroom as well en suite. And we have a third level of cabin, which we call the standard cabin. And they are the same, except they do not have a private bathroom. It's a shared bathroom. That's another view of the bathroom with the water heater, just to show that we have hot water. And another view of our boat. And uh, please welcome Sharky. He will spend a lot of time in the hammock. Another view of the board. At the front is a little bouquet. And that's the team. So that's our team. They are all ties. It's, um, it, it, it's not complete, though I'm missing the captain on this picture, but I guess he was busy when I took that picture. So, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, which I want to. Stop sharing. All right, guys. So this is, um, uh, I come to the end of my presentation. I really wanted to introduce to you that new destination, the Mergui Archipelago, and uh, to help you uh, make up your mind whether you want to come here or not. In terms of equipment, you do not need a lot of gear as a, as a photographer because it's pretty uh, simple, wide angle, macro, two external strobe, one flashlight, one focus light, and you're good to go. Uh, so it doesn't require a lot of things to take good pictures. 
but uh, because of the environment being so diverse, you will have plenty to choose from, from the tiniest macro to the very big guys, um, with caves and, uh, um, um, oh yeah, I'll, okay, well, with, uh, with caves and swim trues and uh, a lot of different, um, a lot of differences all together. From one day to the next, you wake up, it's a very different landscape. So yeah, thanks for listening. If you have uh, any question, I'll, I'll stay for a few minutes. Otherwise, I'll leave you at it and uh, wish you a good end of the trade show. Okay, thank you, Angela. It does look great. It's a place I dive for the for eight years, and um, I'm still not tired of it. So I'm, I can't wait to make it discover again. All right, then I'm gonna go. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening.